Okay, so I've just been watching a video about a failed CTEX CFP with um, a power supply fault. Now, typically, what happens is if they don't have any batteries in, you see if I boot this one up, it will turn on, and then that comes on. Now, I know the reason for that is because there's a battery in. Sorry about that, this is my Google Home. Uh, hang on. Okay, Google, be quiet. Anyway. So, it may be that you... That you, um... If it's got battery, the battery's dead. So one way to test if the batteries are dead, if you do have them installed, is if you shut, if you turn the mains off, it should then stay on and then the um, fault light will come on. That's if you have a battery in. The next thing is, under this board, if you unscrew it, you must, must, must unplug it. That, you have to unplug it. Because if you see, look, it's mains voltage behind this board, so you've got to be very, very careful. There's no... Yeah. Do not mess with anything behind here unless you know what you're doing. So I'm going to unplug that. What there is, is if you look through this hole here, I'm just going to plug it back in just for demonstration to show this. There's a red light. That tells you that dangerous voltage is, pre is, a, is present. So mains voltage is down there. Do not touch that. Now that lights out, I'm going to take this main board off. To do that, you need to unscrew all the things. So once that's done, I'll just disconnect this power cable. So how you disconnect that is there's just a little tab here. You push down and pull it up. So that's the back of a CTEX CFP. If it will zoom. Anyway. This is the power supply board. So one of the problems that it could be is if here you've got something called a fuse. Now what a fuse does is it has a little wire in it. And if it's rated to, let's say, 3 amps, like the one in the plug should be, then what happens is it will blow if it goes above 3 amps. Another thing that's quite common is if if when you do wire this up, you may see that the cable, when you um, cut it, so if I just get some other wire, I'll cut it and I'll show what I mean. So it could be that when you do strip the wire, whichever way you do it, you'll see this is something called flex, because it's flexible. So this is what's used on a lot of mains appliances, so things like your TV, your laptop, and anything that plugs in. As well as when what's actually inside of the wall is this stuff called twin and earth. Now when you, you see if I show me stripping this, it's quite different. You, if you wonder where I'm going with this, you'll all see all the um clear in a minute. So you've got to strip this back. Nope. So when that's stripped back, you can see it's not, I bend it and it stays in shape. That's because it's not designed to be moved much. So this is what's used on the, on the CFP. That's what's wired up inside there, going from that into the power supply. Um, what you want to do... Well, I'll tell you what, I'll pause that and I'll strip both wires and you'll see what I mean. Okay, I've now stripped the wires. So, with the twin and earth, it's just one solid wire. So, that's just easy to put into the terminal. You just slide it in and it's done. And you just tighten it up. As well as with flex, which is most likely to be used if it's just a panel like this. You'll see if I spread it, spread it out. It's lots of little fine wires. 
Now what's really important when you want to wire up a CTEX CFP or any other fire pan with the mains is that you want to get you want to get the wires and actually stop them spreading you want to twist them together so I've now twisted these together a few times you can see how that's nice and that's not going to come apart easily you want to make sure you do that with the brown which is live the blue which is neutral and the green which is earth and then I'm going to rewire this just to give demonstration purposes so you may be able to see my bedside table in the background you know it, it applies to anything that you're wiring up like that um just found my screwdriver that's disappeared won't be a minute i'll just pause while i get a screwdriver that's not the right size wrong one so this is the screwdriver So you can see on these CTEX CFP, you can take the power block out if it's a blue one. So I can just unscrew these. And you'll see that when I um, take take this block away, you can see how the wires are lots of little tiny parts. That's what makes it flexible. So you also want to make sure you have a cable, a cable strain relief. So if you pull it, it doesn't pull these out. That can also cause a problem. But when you want to put these wires back in, you want to make sure that you that none of this metal is showing. So if you put it in, that's not that's not correct. You see there's some metal showing that's in as far as it can go so you don't want to do that you want to fold it over like this because you see you've got more space for the screw to grip now and then you can see how that's going in you also want to make sure there's none of these little like that fine wires they all must go into the terminal completely see that there's absolutely absolutely no there's nothing in there so that's just my phone going uh, but that's that's what I mean it has to be completely completely correct like that I'll take a picture of this and put it in the video now about here showing what it should look like when it's finished so then you can see how that one's not been twisted you want to put them together twist them So they're now how they should be. So you want to put one in, making sure there's no little wires sticking out. Every single wire has to be in this block. Because otherwise they can, if they touch, it causes a big bang. And that could cause the fuse here. Because you've got two fuses. You've got this one. And you've got this one. That's your battery fuse. And that's your main fuse. If your power supply does go bang, you may also want to check the fuse in your plug. So if you open the plug up, it should have a 3 amp fuse in for the C CFP. If it doesn't, you're better to replace it with one. But it could be that your fuse is gone. So the way you could check your fuse is if I... You have to make sure the electricity is, is off before touching any of this. Grab your fuse here, so you can see I've got the fuse. 
if you then create like a little fire alarm circuit or just a, a light bulb or if you have or if you meet and you have something called a multimeter which allows me to ch check and test things so i can test the voltage of the panel but you see you have like this little squiggle here you want to turn it to that so it should display something such as one if it's broke if it's broken it will keep displaying one but if i tap these together you can see the number goes to zero roughly the number should change so what you want to do is connect two ends of the fuse here and you can see that as soon as i touch it the number changes back to zero now if you have a firearm circuit so, so it's battery operated you just want to put two wires on either side test the fire alarm works the fire alarm circuit works before you test the fuse but then just connect the two little things up and then if the fire alarm goes off for example then it, you know you're okay and the fuse is working so if that works you then want to put that back if that fuse is broken then that's what your problem is most likely you also want to check that your terminal block here and also check that you're you've got a strain relief so how you do the strain relief is you can either use a cable gland so 20 millimeters which is the size of from this side of the hole to the other now i'll show a i'll show you what a cable gland looks like for those that don't know it's this you can see you've got two ends you've got a big end and a small end you unscrew the smaller end put that through the hole there and then you tighten this side up here so then that's nice you want to make sure that's tight to, obviously i'm not gonna because i'm gonna take this off after but then the bigger side here because as i turn it it closes more turn it see how that's closing but that's how i've done that as an extra you know strain relief so if you do pull it or knock it it doesn't pull these out and me and cause them to touch because if this happens it can cause it to go bang you've also got a fuse here for your battery you want to take that out and do what i showed you earlier with this or test it with another circuit type thing same applies to a plug now if you want to do a strain relief what you want to do is you want to if you don't already have one unscrew this and slide it up and unplug it so unplug the the main board from the power supply here and then you simply just with the wire loop like that so it's looped push it through pull it then you've got a knot then what you want to do is you want to wire it up so it's wired up then pull the, the wire that goes to the plug don't pull this side pull this side like this and you'll see how that gets smaller as i pull it and then with that you want to put it over one of these so then if you do you know pull it when that board's screwed back on like this it doesn't come out so that just adds a bit of extra safety is what you can see I've done there so if I do pull that it doesn't pull out of the power supply if none of this does fix your problem what it's most likely to be is it's likely to be something with this because it this board does speak with this now sometimes it can be that 
it's just the communications fail so this won't speak to that but it will still give it power but it can't tell if there's anything wrong so basically my tips are check the fuse in the plug um, if you check the, the fuse here check the fuse there and check your batteries I strongly strongly you have to unplug it have to it has to be turned off before you touch any of this board because it is mains voltage if that red light is on do not touch it and I yeah do not touch it because it isn't that is mains voltage but hopefully that's cleared up any problems if you need further help and you need me to know what type of fuse it is I'll have a look and I'll see if I can find any anything for them type on eBay if it is you just take you just pull it out take it out put a new one in and then put it back and it should solve your problem but make sure you check there's no fine wires touching each other there's no fine no metal no tiny little wires sticking out of this because that can touch each other you know if it's if it moves cause them to touch each other and go bang check your fuses when you've done all that plug it back in and then put it back together as you had found it hope you find this video useful and if so yeah comment and subscribe thanks